The main objective of Jean-Francois Baird's book The Illusion of Cultural Identity is to demonstrate how concepts like identity, ethnicity, culture, and community are constructed from a social imagination that is both historical and inherently ambiguous. Despite often being perceived as timeless and clear-cut, the author argues that politics in all societies thrive on symbolic practices that fabricate identities. Therefore, this book does not present anything entirely new, as the acceptance of the plural and constructed nature of identities is already widespread. However, what makes this book compelling is the author's extensive research which confirms the universality and local specificity of these symbolic processes. Additionally, the author elucidates the irrational foundations of these processes, countering Max Weber's notion that modernity has disenchanted the world. Political leaders of various types, including presidents, religious leaders, and figures of popular culture, actively engage in shaping the political imagination producing images and emotions that structure not only individual lives, but also communities and international relationships. Lastly, the author demonstrates how symbols and imaginary practices are often ambiguous and can be transposed from one context to another, where new actors interpret them giving rise to new cultural and symbolic productions. The book is divided into two parts, each comprising two chapters. In the first part titled The Beaujolais Nouveau is here, the author provides a theoretical foundation for understanding the symbolic construction of identities. This section explores how local leaders compose identities and adapt symbols and foreign influences to their particular contexts. In the second part, Owls with Rumi Eyes, the book examines the tangible manifestations of these symbolic processes. The first chapter of the book examines a ritual in Cameroon, where a local big man celebrates his nomination as chief counselor, wedding anniversary, and membership of the Compagnons du Beaujolais by offering Beaujolais to guests. The author argues that traditional concepts of culture or acculturation are insufficient to analyze this ritual. Baird critiques the notion of maintaining a coherent approach to culture, despite the heterogeneous realities in the field. He deconstructs terms like tradition, village community, ethnicity, and Africanness, considering them as fictions created by political dominators. The second chapter challenges the use of the term culture and proposes replacing it with the concept of the imaginaire. Baird argues that political leaders fashion a political imaginaire by drawing from the latent social imaginaire which involves cultural definitions. He discusses four cultural operations within politics. Tactics or strategies of extroversion, practices of transfer of meaning, procedures of authentication, and processes of forming primordial identities. These processes are diverse and enacted in various local settings, and the concept of extroversion, has already entered current analyses of cosmopolitanism. In the third chapter, Baird explores the irrational bases of political imaginaries and reflects on the subjectivity of the image. Political domination engages in an iconographic battle to supersede local images visualized in films melodramas, statuettes, and enacted in ceremonies and performative gestures. The chapter also touches on the role of electronic media in this iconographic battle, and discusses the role of Indian cinema in the advent of democracy on the subcontinent. The fourth chapter focuses on how political imaginaries materialize in daily life. Baird examines the materialization of political imaginaries in decisions related to hairstyles, clothing, cooking practices, and other aspects of lifestyle. He refers to this process as subjectivation, Drawing from the work of Deleuze, the conclusion of the book, The Paradoxical Invention of Modernity, 
summarizes Bayert's understanding of the imaginaire and discusses its relation to contemporary rites of mourning, the universalist pretensions of democracy, and the role of sports and popular culture. Bayert views these aspects as part of the ongoing battle for identity, connecting back to the initial concerns that led him to write the book.